artistry, influences. One of Swift's earliest musical memories is listening to her maternal grandmother, Marjorie Finley, sing in church as a child. She enjoyed Disney film soundtracks. My parents noticed that, once I had run out of words, I would just make up my own. Swift has said she owes her confidence to her mother, who helped her prepare for class presentations as a child. She also attributes her fascination with writing and storytelling to her mother. Swift was drawn to the storytelling aspect of country music, and was introduced to the genre listening to the great female country artists of the 90s Shania Twain, Faith Hill, and the Dixie Chicks. Twain, both as a songwriter and performer, was her biggest musical influence. Hill was Swift's childhood role model. Everything she said, did, wore, I tried to copy it. She admired the Dixie Chicks' defiant attitude and their ability to play their own instruments. Kiss Me by Sixpence None the Richer was the first song Swift learned to play on the guitar. Swift also explored the music of older country stars, including Patsy Cline, Loretta Lynn, Dolly Parton, and Tammy Wynette. She believes Parton is an amazing example to every female songwriter out there. Point old country artists like Patty Griffin and Laurie McKenna have also inspired Swift. Swift has also been influenced by various pop and rock artists. She lists Paul McCartney, Bruce Springsteen, Brian Adams, Emilio Harris, Chris Christopherson, and Carly Simon as her career role models. Discussing McCartney and Harris, Swift has said, they've taken chances, but they've also been the same artist for their entire careers. McCartney, both as a Beatle and a solo artist, makes Swift feel, as if I've been let into his heart and his mind, he's out there continuing to make his fans so happy. Any musician could only dream of a legacy like that. She likes Springsteen for being so musically relevant after such a long period of time. She aspires to be like Harris as she grows older, because of prioritizing music over fame. Swift says of Christopherson, that he shines in songwriting. And admires Simon for being an emotional, but a strong person. Her synth-pop album 1989 was influenced by some of her favorite 1980s pop acts, including Peter Gabriel, Annie Lennox, Phil Collins and Madonna. As a songwriter, Swift was influenced by Joni Mitchell for her autobiographical lyrics conveying the deepest emotions, she wrote it about her deepest pains and most haunting demons. I think, Blue, is my favorite, because it explores somebody's soul so deeply. Musical style and voice. Swift's music consists primarily of element of pop synth pop, country, country pop, rock, alternative rock, indie, and folk. Her works also incorporate R&B, EDM, hip hop and trap. Musical instruments that she plays include guitar, piano, banjo and ukulele. Swift described herself as a country artist until the release of 1989, 2014, which she characterized as her first sonically cohesive pop album. Rolling Stone wrote, Swift might get played on the country station, but she's one of the few genuine rock stars we've got these days. According to the New York Times, there isn't much in Miss Swift's music to indicate country a few banjo strums, a pair of cowboy boots worn on stitch, a bedazzled guitar but there's something in her winsome, vulnerable delivery that's unique to Nashville. The Guardian wrote that Swift cranks melodies out with a pitiless efficiency of a Scandinavian pop factory. Swift possesses a mezzo-soprano vocal range. Her singing voice was described by Sophie Shillacy of The Hollywood Reporter as sweet, but often pitchforks Sam Sodomsky as versatile and expressive. The Los Angeles Times identified Swift's defining vocal gesture in studio recordings as the line that slides down like a contented sigh, or up like a raised eyebrow, giving her beloved girl time hits their air of easy intimacy. Rolling Stone, in a Speak Now review, wrote, Swift's voice is unaffected enough to mask how masterful she has become as a singer, she lowers her voice for the payoff lines and the classic mode of a shy girl trying to talk tough. In another review of Speak Now, the Village Voice wrote that her phrasing was previously bland and muddled, but that's changed. She can still sound strained and thin, and often strays into a pitch that drives some people crazy, but she's learned how to make words sound like what they mean. NPR. Music described her singing as personal and conversational thanks to her exceptional gift for inflection, but also suffers from a wobbly pitch and tight, nasal delivery. The Hollywood Reporter wrote that her live vocals are fine, but they do not match those of her peers. Swift has been credited for refusing to correct her pitch with auto-tune. 
a writer for the Tennessean conceded in 2010 that Swift was not the best technical singer, but described her as the best communicator that we've got. Her vocal ability is something that has often concerned Swift, and she has put a lot of work into improving it. It was reported in 2010 that she continues to receive vocal coaching. She has said she only feels nervous performing. Live if I'm not sure what the audience thinks of me, like at award shows. In 2021, critics from the New York Times noted that her voice became stronger, more controlled, and deeper over time, discarding the nasal tone of her early vocals. A Clash critic opined that Swift's vocals have evolved into her own unique blend of country, pop and indie, songwriting. In an interview with The New Yorker, Swift characterized herself primarily as a songwriter, I write songs, and my voice is just a way to get those lyrics across. In her early songs, Swift's life experiences were a common inspiration. Employing a diaristic approach, Swift began writing a song by identifying an emotion before proceeding with a melody. She described songwriting as a way to help her get through love and loss and sadness and loneliness, and growing up point recurring themes were love and romance. Her debut album depicts infatuation from the perspective of a high school teenage girl, or theme that continued on Fearless, which features fairy tale imagery, to explore the disconnect between fantasy and reality. On Speak Now, Swift explored negative emotions ensuing from lost romance. She delved into the tumult of toxic relationships on Red, and embraced nostalgia and positivity. After failed relationships on 1989 Point Reputation was inspired by the media scrutiny surrounding Swift, and Lover detailed her realization of the full spectrum of love. Besides romance, other themes addressed in Swift's music include parent-child relationships, friendships, alienation, and self-awareness. Swift's confessional narratives received critical praise. Discussing Swift's first three albums, New York Magazine remarked that many singer-songwriters have made great records as teens, but none made great records so explicitly about their teens. Rolling Stone described Swift as a songwriting savant with an intuitive gift for verse-chorus bridge architecture. Although reviews of Swift are almost uniformly positive, the New Yorker stated she was generally portrayed more as a skilled technician than as a Dylan-esque visionary. The Village Voice argued that Swift's iceberg songs were not confessional, but dramatic, and commended Swift for creating characters and situations some from life and finding potent ways to describe them. Tabloid media often speculated and linked the subjects of the songs with ex-lovers of Swift, a practice which New York considered sexist, inasmuch as it's not asked of her male peers. Aside from clues, provided in album liner notes, Swift tried not to talk about song subjects specifically, because these are real people. You try to give insight as to where you were coming from as a writer without completely throwing somebody under the bus. In a 2013 interview with Vanity Fair, Swift responded to criticism on her songwriting. For a female to write about her feelings, and then be portrayed as some clingy insane desperate girlfriend in need of making you marry her, and have kids with her, I think that's taking something that potentially should be celebrated a woman writing about her feelings in a confessional way that's taking it and turning it and twisting it into something that is frankly a little sexist. On her 2020 albums Folklore and Evermore, Swift was inspired by escapism and romanticism to explore fictional narratives. Without referencing her personal life, she imposed her emotions onto imagined characters and story arcs, which liberated her from the mental stress caused by tabloid attention, and suggested new paths for her artistry. In a feature for Rolling Stone, Swift explained that she welcomed the new songwriting direction. After she stopped worrying about commercial success, I always thought, that'll never track on pop radio, but when I was making folklore, I thought, if you take away all the parameters, what do you make? With the release of Evermore, Spin found Swift exploring exceedingly complex human emotions with precision and devastation. Awarding her with the Songwriter Icon Award in 2021, the National Music Publishers Association remarked that no one is more influential when it comes to writing music today than Swift. Music videos. Swift has collaborated with many different directors to produce her music videos, and over time she has become more involved with writing and directing. 
She has her own production house, Taylor Swift Productions Incorporated, which is credited with producing music videos for singles such as me, and is known for hiding elaborate clues and easter eggs in most of her work. In 2010, Swift co-directed the music video for Mine with Roman White. In 2011, she continued to collaborate with White on the music videos for Mean and Ours. Swift developed the concept and treatment for Mean. In an interview, White elaborated that Swift was keenly involved in writing the treatment, casting and wardrobe, and she stayed for both the 15-hour shooting days, even when she wasn't in the scenes. Swift wrote the concept for the R's music video, and then brought in White to direct, describing her vision of both videos as being storylines. From 2014 to 2018, Swift collaborated with director Joseph Kahn on eight music videos for each from her albums 1989 and Reputation. Kahn has praised Swift's involvement in the craft. In 2016, Swift worked with American Express for her Blank Space music video, which Kahn directed, and released the interactive app Amex Unstaged, Tell a Swift Experience. Swift received starring and executive producer credit, and in 2015 won a Primetime Emmy Award in the Outstanding Interactive Program category for the app. She received producing credit in her music video for Bad Blood. Swift developed the concept, wrote the treatment for, and starred in the music video for The Sugarland Song Babe, 2018. She has emerged as a music video director, co-directing the music videos for three lover singles, Me, with Dave Mears, and You Need to Calm Down, and Lover with Drew Kirsch. She co-executive produced the second of them with Todd Rick Hall. She was the sole director of the videos for The Man, for which Swift won the MTV Video Music Award for Best Direction in 2020, Cardigan, and Willow. Swift's personal life is the subject of widespread media attention. In 2013, a Berkrumby and Fitch first marketed, then withdrew after fan backlash, a t-shirt with the slut-shaming slogan more boyfriends than TS. The New York Times asserted in 2013 that her dating history has begun to stir what feels like the beginning of a backlash. They questioned whether Swift was in the midst of a quarter-life crisis. Swift is unwilling to publicly discuss her personal life. She believes that talking about it can be a career weakness. In the 1989 single Blank Space, Swift parodies her media own perception of a girl who's crazy but seductive but glamorous, but nuts but manipulative surrounding her relationships. Swift at the 2010 Time 100 Gala in Manhattan, where she was honored. Rolling Stone remarked upon her polite manner, if this is Swift's game face, it must be tattooed on because it never drops, and noted her ease with glad handing. The Hollywood Reporter described Swift as the best people person since Bill Clinton. While presenting Swift with an award for her humanitarian endeavors in 2012, Michelle Obama described her as an artist who has rocketed to the top of the music industry, but still keeps her feet on the ground, someone who has shattered every expectation of what a 22-year-old can accomplish. Swift considers Obama to be a role model. According to the New York Times and marketing executive Matt B. Britton, Swift's business savvy has helped her excel as an authentic personality who establishes direct connections with her audience, touch as many people as possible, and generate a kind of advocacy and excitement that no level of advertising could. Swift is one of the most followed people on social media. As of April 2021, she has approximately 153 million followers on Instagram. 88.6 million followers on Twitter, and 42.1 million subscribers on YouTube. She is known for her frequent and friendly online interactions with her fans. She has visited fans in hospital, and delivered holiday gifts to them by mail and in person, an event dubbed Swiftmas, and considers it her responsibility to be conscious of her influence on young fans. She has called her relationship with her fans the longest and best she has ever had, often labeled by the media as America's sweetheart, a sobriquet based on her down-to-earth personality and girl-next-door image, Swift insists she does not live by all these rigid, weird rules that make me feel all fenced in. I just like the way that I feel like, and that makes me feel very free she refused to take part in overtly sexualized photo shoots, although Bloomberg views her as a sex symbol. She has been recognized as a fashion icon, Vogue named her an icon of American style in 2011. In 2014, she topped People's Annual Best Dressed List point in 2015. 
she was named Woman of the Year at the Elle Style Awards and ranked first on Maxim's Hot 100 list. Vogue regards Swift as one of the world's most influential figures in sustainable fashion. Impact. Swift's early career as a country singer-songwriter plays an important role in shaping the modern country music scene. New York journalist Jody Rosen asserts that Swift is the first country artist whose fame reaches the world beyond the US following Swift's rise to fame. Country labels have become more interested in signing young singers who write their own music. With her autobiographical narratives revolving around romance and heartbreak, Swift introduces the genre to a younger generation that could relate to her personal struggles. Rolling Stone listed Swift's country music as one of the biggest influences on 2010's pop music and ranked her 80th in the list of 100 greatest country artists of all time. Quartz considered Swift as the most important artist of the millennial era. Her onstage performance with guitars contributed to the Taylor Swift factor, a phenomenon to which media outlets attribute the rise in guitar sales to women, a previously ignored demographic. Publications consider Swift's million-selling albums in the 2010s an anomaly in the streaming-dominated music industry. Following the decline of the album era, she is the only artist to have four albums sell over a million copies within one week. Since Nielsen Soundscan started tracking sales for the Billboard 200 in 1991. For New York Magazine, Swift's million sales figures prove that she is the one bending the music industry to her will. According to Rolling Stone, Swift's opposition to low royalty streaming services and efforts to claim ownership to her masters were two of the defining moments for the music industry in the 2010s decade. Her actions have fostered debate over reforms to on-demand music streaming and prompted awareness of intellectual property rights among younger musicians. Swift was named Woman of the Decade of the 2010s by Billboard and became the first woman to earn the title Artist of the Decade 2010s, at the American Music Awards. She won the Brit Global Icon Award in recognition of her immense impact on music across the world. Swift and her work have influenced various recording artists, including Ruth B., Shami Bailey, Kelsia Bellerini, Priscilla Block, Bailey Bryan, Camila Cabello, Sabrina Carpenter, Sophia Carson, The Chainsmokers, Daya, Selena Gomez, Ellie Goulding, Conan Gray, Griff, Halsey, Niall Horan, Little Mix, Sean Mendes, Soccer Mommy, Merrin Morris, Nina Nesbitt, Nikki, Finis O'Connell, Macy Peters, Girl in Red Freer Ridings, Olivia Rodrigo, Tegan and Sarah, Troy Sivan, Hayley Williams, The Vamps, and Zahara. Please like and subscribe to my channel is correct. For more entertainment, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Thanks for watching, yours Jelly Santhosh Kumar.